Today is going to be our chapter five review. Our chapter five test is happening October 14th. So for lesson one, this is kind of an introduction. You guys should have already opened to page 344 and done one through six. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not. That's pretty much the motif of this chapter. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. We already got that. So let's see. So if the fiddler crab was three feet above sea level, we would write positive three. In fact, we would actually just write three because like nobody cares about positives. So I'm gonna call on people, ready? Eagle's nest, the number for eagle's nest. I wanna know it, Hannah. Eagle's nest? Oh, Hannah, yes, it is 75. Romario, dolphin. Negative 10. Okay, Anita, spider crab. Negative 375. Roman, blue heron. Four, exactly. So we see these words. We've gone over them before. We have gone back to our work is when we see the word above, we know it's positive. When we see the word below, we know it's negative. When we see the word above, positive, below, negative. Let's look at this one. What negative number, what negative number is the same difference from zero as the number positive four is? Taco, what number? Negative four, exactly, because if we look, we do our hops. One, two, three, four. Hey, that's four hops away from zero. Let's look at four. One, two, three, four. That's four hops away from zero. Also, what do we know? What do we know about distance? Hannah? Um, that, uh, uh, the negative of the numbers always equal. It's just the complete opposite. Yes, so distance is always positive. Distance is always positive. So let's think about this. I'm just going to read one for you that I came up with at the top of my head. Write a real world situation that can be described using the number negative six. Describe what zero would represent in this situation. So, Miss Diaz had a class in which six people were tardy. In which six people were tardy. Who can tell me what would the number zero mean in that situation? If negative six meant six people were tardy, what would it mean, Miles? Zero people were tardy. Zero people were tardy. I'm not even going to have questions like that on our test because I think that they're just so blatantly obvious. But basically, you got a number. Zero just means... You don't got that. If you win 50 bucks, what does zero mean? You don't, you don't win 50 bucks. You have no money. You, have no, you didn't lose money. You didn't win money. Exactly. So we're going to be filling this in with a less than or greater than sign to make our inequality true. Let's do this all together. All together. Number 26. Less than or greater than? Greater than. 27. Less than 28. Less than 29. Greater than 30. Greater than 31. Less than. Thank you. So we can all go through and it's pretty obvious what numbers go where. Now, we're going to go over it a little bit later in our chapter with the negatives. That's where it gets a little more confusing, but we're smart enough to figure it out. So congratulations. This is pretty much the entire Ch uh, the entire lesson. All it is is knowing where we can plot numbers. If I had a number line, if I had a number line, right? Which numbers go to this way if that's zero? Which numbers go that way, Rafi? Positive. What about the numbers that go this way? What are they, Anita? Negative numbers. Excellent. What about here? If this was my zero, what numbers go up that direction? What numbers go up that way, Michelle? And Romario, what numbers go that way? Negative. Negative. Exactly. When we put it all together, when we put our little graph thing all together, that's how we get this section being positive, this section having a positive and a negative, this section having a negative and a negative, and this section having a positive and a negative. That's how we can see. Oh, sorry, you're right. I did mess up once. There we go. I fixed. Thank you. I love it when you guys call me out on that because I'm working real fast. I want you. Yeah, I love it. 
So for lesson two review, open to page 354 and we're gonna do numbers three through six. Once again, this should be really easy. In fact, most of you already should have done it. Most of you already should have done it. So let's look forwards, ready? So if our integer is three, if our integer is three, the distance between our integer and zero is three, three hops. What's the opposite of three? What's the opposite of three, Michelle? Negative three. But what's the distance between negative three and zero? What's the distance between negative three and zero, Anita? Also three. Here's an easy way to do it. Let's look at these two columns first, our integer and our opposite integer. If our integer is seven, Fernando, what's our opposite integer? Negative seven. Roman, if our integer is negative 11, what is our opposite integer? Positive 11. What about the opposite of negative 13, Carmen? 13. What about the opposite of negative 21, Lucy? 21, right? So the opposite is just either with a negative sign or without it, depending on the other one. Now, as we know, the distance between 3 and 0 is 3. Who can tell me? What's the difference between 7 and 0? Distance between 7 and 0, Rocco. 7. 7. What about the distance between negative 7 and 0? What about that, Lucy? Also 7. So as such, as such, the answers for this are going to be 11, 13, 21, and 11, 13, 21. Because as I will say constantly, distance is always positive. If on your test you write distance as a negative, I'm going to be so sad. Gloria, what's the answer to 27? Nine. Wait, what? Neg uh, yes, it is 9 because Wait. it asks us to find the opposite of the opposite. The opposite integer is negative 9, and the opposite of that is 9. Okay, Matthew, what about 28? The opposite of the opposite of 0 is... Zero. Is there such thing as positive zero? No. No. Negative zero? No. There's just zero. Madison, answer for 29. Uh, negative eight. Negative eight. Exactly. Okay, Miles, what's the answer to 30? 18. Awesome, because absolute values are always positive. Tobias, answer to 31. Um, zero. Zero. Elsie, 20, or 32. 25. 25. Here's where we get a little bit more complicated. Hannah, what's the answer to 33? Um, 15. 15. And that's because absolute values are always positive. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. Then we've got our plus sign. Absolute value of negative 13 is 13. We get our answer is 15. What about this one? What about this one? What's the answer? You can do it. I believe in you. What's the answer to 34, Melanie? Negative three. Is it negative three? You have the right answer right there. Yeah, three. It is three, exactly. It is three, because our absolute value of 20, it, or negative 20 is 20. The absolute value of 17 is 17. We subtract, we get three. Michelle, what about the answer to 35? Is, are the numbers 18 or five? Oh, okay. Uh, 11? 11, exactly, because negative 16, the absolute value becomes 16. We have the subtraction, absolute value of 5 becomes 5. 16 minus 5 is 11. Exactly. That is how absolute values work. There is only one case in which the answer to an absolute value will not be positive. Can anybody remember what that one case scenario is, Hannah? Yes, when our negative sign is on the outside of our absolute value. And that's because only what's in the absolute value counts. So what would be the answer to this? The answer to the negative absolute value of three. What would it be, Jaden? Negative three. I've got a question. What about the, abs what about the answer to this? The answer to the negative absolute value of negative three. The negative absolute value of negative three. Ben. Negative three. Still, because the negative is on the outside. Once we do it, inside, 
always becomes positive. It's whatever's on the outside that happens. Exactly. So this says, order each set of integers from least to greatest. Who can remind me? What does integer mean? What is integer, Hannah? An integer helps us measure distance. It can have a positive or a negative sign, or it can be zero. But the most important thing is that integers are always whole numbers. Integers are always whole numbers. They are rational numbers, but they are always whole numbers. We're ordering the integers from least to greatest. Integers are always a whole number. They are a type of rational number, but fractions and decimals are not integers. So it says from least to greatest. What number here is the least on our number line? What uh, would our least be? Let's go, Anita. Negative 221. Exactly. What's next, Andrew? What's our next smallest? I'll come back to you. Fernando, what is our next smallest? Negative 89. What is our next, Andrew? Negative 71. Then what comes next? Negative 71. What comes next, Madison? Um, negative 10. Negative 10. Then what comes next, Miles? 54. 54. And then what comes last, Rocco? 63. 63. Let me just ask. If I looked at this, why isn't 221 the biggest number? 221 is so big. I want that much money. Why, Oswaldo? Because it's a negative number. Because it's a negative number. Oh. Gary, Sindhu, and Beth are all waiting for their trains to arrive. Gary's train leaves five minutes before noon. Sindhu's train leaves at 25 minutes after noon. And Beth's train leaves five minutes before Sindhu's train. Order the trains by who will leave first. So who leaves first? Someone before noon or someone after noon? Before or after Liam? Who leaves first before noon or an afternoon train? Before noon train. Whose train is before noon? Whose train? Adriana. Gary's the only one whose train's before noon. Let's think about our next one, though. So now we've got two people. Uh, Sid, whose train leaving 25 minutes after noon, and then Beth leaving 25 minutes before Sindhu. So who goes first? Sindhu or Beth? Uh, Rafi. Beth, because she, she leaves before. Exactly. So that would be our order. This is how we do it. If we graphed things, if we graphed things here, this is D. If we graphed it, this is C. If we graphed it, this is B. And if we graphed it, this is A. Do we see how we would graph things if we did it? All I did was look at our chart right over here, look at our chart and put a matching number. We've got two definitions, terminating decimal and repeating decimal. What does terminating decimal mean? In one word, what does terminating decimal mean, Fernando? Ends, exactly. It ends, it stops, it terminates, end. What about repeating decimal? Who can tell me in, like I said, one or two words in repeating decimal, what does it mean? Rafi. Keeps going, yeah, keeps going, doesn't stop. What's another word we see the word? What is the word in it, Rocco? Repeating. It repeats. So a lot of these, when we're dealing with rational numbers, they have to repeat. They don't ever just go on forever. So for example, pi is a number that it has a decimal and it doesn't ever repeat. So it would not be a repeating decimal. It is called an irrational number. Now, let's match these. Let's match these. I'm going to circle them. Are you ready? Which one... Which one is a repeating decimal? Give me an example of a repeating decimal. Hannah, tell me one of them. Uh, negative 0.17. Perfect. It's negative 0 0.27. We've got that line over it, which means which number goes on forever? Which number, Michelle? Seven. The 7 goes on forever. Does the 2 go on forever? No, the line's not over the 2. What's our next? What's our next repeating decimal, Madison? 5.3. 5.3. Which one? Which 5.3, Mario? The one on the bottom, because it's got the line. It's got the line. What, what other repeating decimals do we have? Do we have any? No. So, as such, very simple, this decimal is terminating. Doesn't have a line, doesn't have more. This decimal's terminating. Doesn't have a line, doesn't have more. This decimal's terminating. Doesn't have a line, doesn't have more. 
Terminating and repeating decimals can be both positive, can be both negative. All you need to do to determine if something is a terminating or repeating decimal is long division. Long division. Let's look at this. Negative two ninths. I set up my long division. It's a negative. We don't have to worry. We just put that negative sign there. When our, when our numerator is smaller than our denominator, what is our decimal going to start with? When our numerator is smaller, Hannah? Zero. Exactly. We already know that it's going to start with with zero. We already know that it's gonna start with zero because nine does not go into two. We have to bring this down, 20. How many times does nine go into 20? Nine goes into 20, uh, Rafi. Two times, that's 18, right? We subtract, we bring down our two. Oh, we bring down our next zero. Does anybody notice anything right away? What do we notice, Oleg? There's a pattern, what's the pattern, Hannah? Exactly, our pattern keeps repeating. If our pattern repeats, so does our decimal. As soon as the pattern repeats, everything that was within that section repeats. So if our pattern, we had 20, then we had 30, 70, 90, back to 20, what would repeat is all of those decimals. What would repeat was all of those decimals. So once we get back to that 20, it puts the line over the first one. So let's just say, like I said, I'm making things up. If it was 20, we got 0 0.7923. Then we're back to the 20, we get a 7, right? These ones repeat, and we wouldn't even need to write the 7 because it's going to keep repeating. As long as we have it, everything that is within these patterns, like that's within these patterns, that repeats until we get to that next pattern. That's how we know the pattern starts. That's how we know the pattern ends. If we don't get, if it, if our number ends, if we're example, we're taking the square, if we're dividing one half, one half, zero, 10, five, 10, zero. Is that a repeating or terminating? Terminating. That's it. That's that entire lesson. When we're doing this, when we're doing this, now we've got negative integers. We've now got negative integers. So when we're looking at them, we have to do it a little bit backwards. Which number would typically be bigger? 4.08 or 4.7? Which one would typically be bigger? Positive 4.08 or positive 4.7? What is it, Michelle? 4.7 is bigger, exactly. So if they're negative, what happens? If they're negative, Hannah? You just flip it. If they're negative, you just flip it. What about this one? Let's look at this one, because this one was a little challenging. This one was a little challenging. Negative 3.375 and negative 3 and 4 tenths. Let's make them into decimals. What is negative 3 and 4 tenths as a decimal? 3 and 4 tenths as a decimal. What is it, Michelle? 3.4. Exactly. We know how to make decimals. Take our time. We can use long division. We can do stuff like that. Now, typically, typically, which one's bigger? Which one's bigger? Positive 3.375 or positive 3.4? Which one's bigger, Elsie? 3.4. So since they're negative, what do we do? We reverse it. Ben, what is the point? What is the coordinate point for point D? I'll give you a hint. D is right there. It's in quadrant four. That's great. So the point is what? It is three comma negative five. Perfect. And as he said, it's in Q4. Jaden, what about point S? That's right here. Point S. What's its coordinate point? S. We'll come back to Jaden. Daniel, what is point P? What's the value for point P? Negative 5 and 4. Negative 5 comma 4. What quadrant is that in, Daniel? Quadrant 2. Trey, what is the value for point J? No, it is not negative five, negative four. What is it? Who can tell me Gloria? Uh, which one? For point J, for point J. Yeah, negative four, negative five. Negative four, negative five. It matters what order you write it in. And what quadrant is that one in, Hannah? It is in quadrant three. Quadrant three. Jaden, what's the answer for yours? Negative 
negative two, one, exactly. And who can tell me what quadrant point S is in? Who can tell me what quadrant point S is in, Fernando? Quadrant two. And lastly, Emerson, what point value? For M, it is five comma four. And what is its quadrant? One, right? Exactly. Quick, we're going over everything. I'm gonna call on you, and you're gonna tell me the three facts. You're gonna tell me the three facts, ready? You're gonna tell me what is the quadrant and what is the and what are the values of our points. You're gonna tell me the quadrants and what are the values of our points. Ready? You're gonna tell me what quadrant it is and you're gonna tell me the value of the points. So, Romario, what is this quadrant called? What is that one called? Quadrant one. And what are the points? Are they positive, negative, positive? Oh. Our x coordinate and our y coordinate, what kind of values are they? Positive, negative, what? Positive. positive, positive. Excellent. What is this one, Anita? This one right here? Uh, quadrant, three. quadrant three. What is our x value? Yeah, and our y value? Po is negative, yes. What about this one, Rafi? Uh, quadrant two. And what's our x value? Positive, uh, so is our x, what's our x value, Hannah? Two is um, negative. negative and y is positive. And lastly, this is quadrant four, Madison. Positive, positive, negative. That's what we need to know. When you're graphing, that's what matters. And lastly, just this, what is this point called? What is that point called? I want to see someone whose hand I've never seen up. I'm going to call on Oswaldo. What is that point right there in the middle called? Trey, what is it? The origin. It's the origin. Excellent.